All right, welcome everyone to Fierce Network. Here I am today with the Pender Pingo General Manager for Indoor Cellular Networks at Andrew and Amphenol Company. Some of you might remember you joined us before here on Fierce Network, and we're here to catch up on what's been going on since. Upendra, great to see you. Thank you for joining us and welcome once again. Thank you, Alejandro. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right, well, let's get right down to it. I, I want to pick your brains today, Upendra, of course, on in building wireless. But before we get into what's ahead and what you've been working on, I was hoping you could give us a bit of an update in terms of the market uh, for in-building and specifically, where are we in terms of connectivity for large venues and enterprises today? What we are seeing is with uh, the wireless being considered as the fourth utility now behind water, electricity and gas, we are seeing requirements for wireless for indoor connectivity more and more. And when I think about that, I'm seeing that for both venues and buildings and for both people as well as things. Secondly, when we look at large public venues, right? I mean, when we think about stadiums and airports and train stations, these guys may be requiring uh, the cellular connectivity for fan experience, uh, for large crowd getting there for a game or so on and so forth. From an enterprise perspective, these folks are looking at maybe providing coverage and capacity for a hospital, let's say, for patients and doctors and nurses, or for the doctor to do a remote surgery from somewhere. So the use cases for in-building are, are growing in nature. And if I really look back, the focus traditionally for in-building cellular connectivity was more on those large public venues that was uh, relatively easier to monetize, where the requirement was absolutely there. And everything else, especially for buildings and enterprises, it was kind of left towards Wi-Fi. Uh, but now these enterprises have use cases, whether it's public or private networks, they have use cases and they, they have demand for people and things again for in-building cellular connectivity. So across the board, I think the expectation is now that cellular connectivity becomes ubiquitous and people don't have to think about connecting their phone to a particular system or not. The expectation is that it's seamless. Whether you're inside a building, whether you walk out and go somewhere, whether you're in a train, you want to be able to stay on the same network and have a very seamless experience and never have to deal with drop call and, and less coverage and capacity. So that's what the expectation is. And that's why we see demand picking up for these things more and more. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes a lot of sense. Now, Upendra, why don't we talk a little bit more about the technical aspect of these deployments? Specifically, I'd, I'd love you to talk us through how you see Open RAN working indoors and what opportunities that does open up for some of these use cases you've talked about here? Great. I, I, I'm very glad you asked the question because typically what we see is when people talk about Open RAN, they're thinking about the outdoor macro network, the high power outdoor macro network. They're not really thinking about the indoor cellular network. What we've seen and what we've been pushing for is uh, the requirement for in building cellular can be very similar to that of outdoor. And I want to give a couple of examples. For those operators who are who are bought in with ORAN, for them deploying ORAN outdoor or indoor is about the same. I mean, you may be using different uh, solutions, but it's the same technology, same architecture. But for those operators who are still kind of on the fence in terms of ORAN, we think that indoor is a fantastic sandbox because you're deploying that in a confined area, whether it's a building or a stadium, it's in a confined area. So you're not really impacting anything outdoor. You're not impacting any wide area network. So if you really want to try it out, this is a fantastic sandbox to, to try it out. But then you start thinking about, okay, we, we are talking about ORAN as a technology. We have heard about all the innovation that it drives. But if you really go on the other side of the table, and if you put yourself in the shoes of a venue owner or a building owner and an enterprise owner, they may say, so what? What do I get, right? So what we've been thinking about is how do we make sure that this technology innovation provides the benefit for the, the venues and enterprises alike? From a venue point of view, if you're the venue owner, you are trying to maximize the real estate. You are trying to minimize the, the OPEX in terms of electricity consumption. So when you, when you maximize the real estate, if you save some space that you don't have to put all this uh, equipment in, you can use that space to put concession stands and monetize that space. If you think from a massive power consumption that typically happens with these traditional systems, if you can save on that, 
now you can basically drive for sustainability right so those are the things that a venue will think about if you put yourself in the shoes of an enterprise uh the space and electricity consumption may not be a big deal because you're putting it in a very small building let's say let's say 100000 square feet building but then what you want to do is you've been for decades used to applying wifi so you want a simplicity like wifi you want an app that does the monitoring and management of the system uh you want ease of x ease of deployment ease of use ease of management so those are the things that you are used to from a enterprise owner point of view so with oran we are able to virtualize the equipment we are able to give them the mix and matching we are able to deploy the equipment on standard of the shelf servers which they are very used to from a wifi a wifi perspective so in a way what i'm saying is oran is able to provide all these benefits for the end user for the end customer that otherwise it's going to be very challenging so that's what we see technology not for the sake of technology but for the sake of what is in it for the end user and the owner now of course uh, and i should mention that we're not talking about theory here this isn't something you just been working on in the labs i know at the end of last year here at fierce network we covered Verizon's announcement of the first live deployment of open ran with das of course you were involved in that process very exciting milestone for the industry and for this concept that you're talking about uh, today uh, upendra can you give us uh, and the viewers a bit of detail and background into how that process went from concept to the deployment i just mentioned yes we are very excited about the announcement so just to give you an idea what verizon announced is that they deployed first in the us multi oem or an network for in austin texas and that multi oem network is basically a, i'm going to use some oran terminologies now it's a samsung odu connected with a comscope oran digital indoor das so so that is what uh, they deployed uh, so that's the announcement so we are not talking about a road map we are not talking about an architecture we are not talking about some strategy long term and all that we are talking about an actual deployment right so that is what we are doing right now we have always push for taking oran indoors and this is a this is basically uh, the proof that we we are basically delivering to what we are saying now having said that we all know that oran is a is a dynamic requirement it's a dynamic spec so this is just the beginning i mean there is a lot more investment that needs to happen in terms of the hardware in terms of the software in terms of the transport loading all this virtualize it on servers a lot of new investment and development needs to happen which we are obviously focusing on doing for many years to come but again we took the first step and we we are going ahead and deploying this uh, indoor network on oran as we speak excellent now pendra i know that you love to speak about deployability sustainability and performance three topics that you've already hinted at in your answers here today just wondering if you could um tell us about what so- some of the benefits you're seeing of the back of this deployment and any other information that you have around open ran and its application indoors technology for the sake of technology or the sake of oh yeah this is a cool thing that we are doing is one thing but technology for the sake of actual capex saving opex saving savings in hard dollars savings in real estate that is what we are able to accomplish with all the concerns Uh, operators would have in terms of monetization of the investment in the spectrum that they that they spend money on we are able to say that okay we can we can provide you some benefits you can we can improve uh, space savings you can improve electricity savings and these are some hard savings that we are able to demonstrate by deploying oran in building and again going back to my earlier uh, comment if you think yourself uh, from a perspective of an operator or an enterprise if you think from a perspective of a venue owner versus an as an enterprise owner you are going to be looking at okay what does it do for me what benefits do i get out of this technology right so that is what we are pushing for again kind of repeating myself here but from a large public point of view uh, public venue point of view space and electricity savings and from an enterprise point of view ease of use innovation deploying on standard of the shell server these are the benefit we are able to provide by going indoor for oran All right, thank you for that Upendra. Now, we are nearly at our uh, end of the interview here, but before we wrap up, 
I wanted to ask you perhaps a tricky question and put you a bit on the spot. We've talked about the deployment of Verizon and the exciting news and the impact, but let's face it, we've been talking about in-building in DAS and its impact for a long time. What are you thinking about beyond this milestone that's very exciting, in my opinion, shifts the discussion in terms of the future of DAS small cells and, and that convergence of open RAN? What are you working on and, and what can you share with us? To give our view in terms of the future, let me go back up in past a little bit and then we, I can I can see what we think is going to happen in future. Right back in the day, few decades back, um, if, if you want to cover a large public venues, the solution was a big bulky analog DAS. And then if you want to cover some the small buildings, then the solution was a single operator or a multi-operator, multi-operator indoor small cell, right? But then if you look at over the last decade plus, what we have done here is we have, we have built an architecture that's on the digital platform. You can call it for DAS for large public venues or for uh, small cell for uh, enterprises. For both, we have actually built a digital architecture and then the next step we are taking now is taking that digital architecture and putting it on the open architecture, right? So we have taken the digital ORAN solution now. And what we are able to do with that is we can scale up and down. And when I say up and down, I'm talking about small, medium, large power requirements that can satisfy small buildings, medium venues, large stadiums, airports, all of it. We're able to scale left and right. And what I mean by that is I can go indoor or outdoor, I can go public networks or private networks. So essentially this architecture, the systems that uh, we have designed is able to cater to all the requirements of a typical in-building architecture. We have seen this convergence. I mean, we talk about DAS and small cells separately in past. Now what we are saying is it's, it's, a, it's a cellular architecture. From a customer point of view, you can call it whatever you want. As long as it provides me the right connectivity, coverage and capacity, add a competitive price, and with some ease of use with an app that I, I'm able to manage both the systems, that is what I want as a consumer, as a as an owner of the venue and, and uh, uh, enterprise. So that is what uh, we are able to provide. And I think back to your question earlier about with the advancements in ORAN, with able to do mix and match of different OEMs, driving innovation on each of these components, we think that the industry is going to migrate to a, a very sophisticated architecture that you can cover all your in-building requirements and have a ubiquitous, seamless experience for the user. And that user, again, can be a person or it can be a thing. It can be a robot. But again, a ubiquitous, seamless experience is what we are providing now. Awesome. Well, Upendra, we'll have to bring you back here to tell us all about these exciting developments because it feels and there certainly looks like there's a lot going on and some exciting use cases for us to discuss and, and to come in this space. Upendra Pingal, General Manager for Indoor Cellular Networks at Andrew. Always a pleasure to have you join us and thank you again for your time. Thanks for having me, Alejandro. Talk to you again soon. Excellent. And to you, our viewer as well, thank you so much for joining us today to learn a little bit more about indoor open RAN applications. Of course, we'll be back very soon on your feed right here on Fierce Network. Until then, take care and bye-bye.